Hello everyone, this event happens live, so if you have any questions, please ask in the chat. <coughs> and yeah, we are ready to start actually. Today I prepared some interesting materials for you, and for sure crocuses, my favorite sign of spring, and yesterday you know, it's it's really sign. Yesterday I saw crocuses in my garden. You know this one, yellow ones, these ones. This I took this picture last year. Those ones uh, were in bloom yesterday, and I feel so excited to today. Yes, I'm gonna to paint them today together with you. I have three different washes. This one here, which I showed you. Another one, this. And I wanted to paint a chipmunk on top. And imagine you want to paint a chipmunk. It's not interesting to start to paint this wonderful funny creature on a white, right? You know, it will be empty. I feel like it will be empty. And instead of painting on a white piece of paper, I thought, what if I revise my old pieces? This one reminds me about a rock. We have a lot of rocks here in Canada, a lot of mountains. And this piece of stone just pop in in my imagination. I think if I add, you know, edges, for the, it, it will be perfect rock. And I can paint a chipmunk on top of it or in the middle. If I paint an edge here, I can turn this into a stem of a tree. And here you can see branches. I see branches and many leaves. I can paint branches and paint chipmunk somewhere here or there. I encourage you and I'm doing my painting afternoons for you, to inspire you, to motivate you, to keep doing, to continue, don't stop. This is a wonderful time. This is actually a possibility to really revise your art journey and look at it with more quality, more deep. And let's back to the chipmunk. So this is my chipmunk on top of this layer painted. And here I didn't uh, paint where, what does he doing? And maybe you have some ideas how to continue to develop this piece. Because right now he is flying in the sky. And maybe I, I will start from painting, you know, uh, some ground, maybe, sh maybe from, from shadows, maybe this helps me to just to start. this here yeah, once I add this look I started to see kind of peak here and this is how it works you know you can walk in around thinking but this is my favorite part once you took your brush take your time and go for a work move your brush adventure begins and the wonderful thing is, you never know what will be at the end of each of adventure. This is why I'm so passionate to paint in watercolor and to paint regularly. Even if I have, you know, bad days when I feel not artistry at all or creative, I make a little, you know, I already establish a habit and I wish everyone to find what you love to do and do it on a regular basis and develop it as a habit because right now I fulfill my batteries by doing my art, by painting regularly even on days where I don't feel artistry so this is my old piece, I'm not sure I have this color, but let's try to camouflage it. Maybe I will camouflage it with the mix of 
those three yellow orange and brown and I started to see he is almost falling so I need something to ground him and I will start with the little hints like this maybe like that oh it could be a tree actually it could be an old dry snag yeah I see a snag here so I place my brush at the side and guessing I'm guessing and see am I like it does it work let's continue or stop at this stage it's fine I want to as always I want to keep it simple did you think about your art journey and what do you think about your art journey does this situation help you to yeah it's uh, it's strange feeling but actually such situations helps to because you used to you're locked in a house and you have time and you think about your life and about as an artist we think a lot about what we are doing what we're passionate about and as my channel my youtube channel lazy wonder brush about painting and i suppose people are following me because of you know our um our love to painting and you know spread creative energy this is how we used to live and interact and connect with the world and say our word right now i started to see a dry snag do you so maybe i would mix with the perlin and i want a little bit darker this is very simple oh i like how it you know uh i don't want to rush right now i really see a dry snag here like he, he's sitting maybe here oh i have an idea what if i do like a branch yeah i paint from my imagination right now this is my improvisation so what if i paint a branch like his other leg landed on a, on a branch does it work oh i love it i love it how it looks like thicker maybe a little bit thicker so i'm guessing each time i add a dot make step back and i'm guessing does it work for me or not maybe if you more dark one signature marks for the snag i can add i could use actually clean wrap what you think if i add on top of this another tip i can make this part here and automatically paint not a snag but a tail also but i need smaller brush i call this brush laser because this is the smallest tiny hairs you can achieve with it i discovered so i bring the same pigment from the snag and i paint hairs like this look right now i have fluffy tail here and don't overwork just a few details i get an impression illusion of a fluffy tail and this is okay this is all right and let's see if it uh, works i'm not sure if it stick sticks you know maybe revise your old pieces like like this one here i actually get inspired just to turn on your artist sparkle because this is our way to connect with the world to say what we want to say and yeah just you know find something to make it to make it work to start something to steer I was so inspired by those washes. For example, I can use the same clean wrap to achieve a rocks. Imagine to add a rocks on the back 
here. Just think about it. Or in the bottom. So something messy but interesting background. Um, and yes, yeah, so let me know what you think. Does it finish or not? Another tip, uh, when I feel, you know, uh, when I feel kind of worry and aware, I always try to drink more and it helps me. I don't know why, but when I drink a lot of water or tea, I feel good. Actually, I have two bottles. I don't know how it works, my, works maybe wash away all my problems. Let's see. <laughs> It's too warm and these more colder, more neutral colors, earth colors, make a kind of balance. I feel more balanced with those dark grays, earth colors, and no, not so hot. This is too hot. It feels like this is the hottest day in autumn. And with those rocks, I feel better because um, it gives the feeling of calm down, cool down, right? Yeah, I like the idea about rocks. So what if I paint rocks on top? I know that I already showed you how I paint crocuses every spring. <laughs> and you can revise and watch them again in my classes. And this year again, I start this spring by this painting demonstration with crocuses so sorry for that this is my favorite flower and each time i paint them um, i don't know i just love them just love them and my next painting afternoon i will be i will continue to paint my favorite signs of spring yeah there will be another painting afternoon this month yeah i'm uh, you know i want to support our community and spread the joy of watercolor and do as much as I can to inspire you, to motivate you and don't get upset, okay? Crocuses, if I paint those crocuses, I would think about negative shapes. So if you don't know what is negative shape painting, or if it, it's hard for you to use this technique, this is amazing tool in painting. I want to show you in a simple, in a simple way, with a simple words, what is negative shapes, how to do that, what is that, and how to create something uh, using it. So if I paint those crocuses, I would... I have white paper, right? And this is a negative shape. So this part here would be negative shape this one is positive but it's white i don't gonna to spend much time here took long and small brush <clears throat> and think where i want to place crocus this is a large piece so it's not a problem where to start from in the center maybe up or lower in the bottom part here and pay more attention to yeah i want to pay more attention to the air i have wonderful morning work with my son today and i enjoy fresh morning air fresh air You can start from just one flower, for example. It will be simpler. And rapidly, before they dry, before this line dry, I softer it. You can softer with water or with pigment, but make it quick. I'm a huge fan of water and water is the main 
roll on my painting plays main role on my painting so as you can see my paper glow with the water why in a minute i'm going to show you and what if i add ultramarine oh it stays doesn't doesn't flow so i add more water and here you can notice i'm absolutely not worried what happens underneath i'm focusing on capturing the negative shape this is negative shape stage i wanted to show you what's that and my boy my ultramarine doesn't flow so i clear my brush and add water underneath and once i add water look what happens and i want kind of direction maybe on okay let's maybe move in this direction i used to Bend this way maybe another turquoise this one or blue like that and a lot a lot of water because water does all the magic all the magic happens we have snow we still have snow here in Ontario Canada so when I think about the snow I can add a salt on top I can add single grains just a few like this is uh, snowflakes or many uh, what if I use this blue and paint with it just a little bit and start to form petals it's uh, it's almost nothing but actually it creates an illusion of a petals and depth to your painting so if I paint the bottom part for this flower here like this then change pigment play play again again just for interest and just in second I'm going to do exactly the same thing and spread this line so be quick don't stay for long on this stage and once I have this line here I can be totally free no rules any pigments any brush marks any amount of pigments you can go bolder or stay softer this is up to you I uh, bring more water and let the magic happens with spontaneous brush marks what I do I add water to let it flow like this I love those rivers look at that <laughs> right now it looks like water lily for me mm, I think how to save the situation how to turn back this into crocuses not a water lily I enjoy this flow. Actually, I'm not worried. Uh, am I right? Does it look like what or not? I'm really excited how this indigo flow and how it looks against this spring green and how my crocuses actually pop in and how fresh they are looking. I'm excited to start to, to paint warm centers with the pollen and stuff. It could be snow, right? Crocuses grow while it's still snowy. Uh, during my demonstrations, I always, you know, I have a strict time, and I think while painting for demonstrations, I think how to show from the one take in 15 minutes, in 30 minutes, how to finish up with painting with the result. 
I like the idea to invite color from the background to paint my subject. Why not to use in it again? Maybe with a smaller brush. What if I use this green to paint a petal? And this one here also. Or I can use pigment from this drop here. See it? Excellent for painting my subject. I, I don't even think what color to choose. I just paint with colors from the background to paint my white subject. Wonderful tip. Maybe go bolder. If I pay too much attention to be perfect with those petals, with those lines, painting become heavy, especially for light subjects like crocuses, like spring flowers, butterflies. You want an, a feeling, an essence of a subject. Not paint every single stem, leg or leaf. So here I ask you to, when you notice, when you start to pay too much attention for correction, loosening up and let your brush to wash away your problems, wash away your stress feelings, your wish to be perfect, just, you know, let yourself to create, mis to make mistakes, like I do right now. I just let my brush move in and I apply my brush marks, not worrying about those perfect crocuses shapes, to take perfect crocuses shapes. And this adds spontaneous feelings, seems so effortless feeling. But remember, I started from very accurate outline. So I'm not continuously losing in and not thinking and not watching what I'm painting. I did a great job. I created a nice accurate outline here and there and the other areas I'm totally free. So that's the key. I wanted to show you where you can be totally free and have kind of like guidelines kind of you want you can rely on and I have many tutorials and courses on all sorts of subjects, how I implement and how to paint animals using this guide, this approach to watercolor loose style, how to paint landscapes, figures, flowers, birds and more. Right now it's cold and I'm super excited to finish it by adding warm pigments from uh, this warm color, color gamma. For example, this luminosity pink. I don't need much. Just prepare a few colors, maybe lemony pigment, yellow and orange. <laughs> oh, have fun and use all of them. So I will be accurate. Uh, with the shape not to go to the wet area like this maybe go with the lemony very spontaneous not don't be accurate and with clear brush filled with water I can walk around Next one, don't st don't spend too much time. And this one, what if I wet it? 
before I add pigment. As I said, be different. So to prove that point, I will be different for this one here. So I wet this section. It's wet. And what color to choose? The same, the same pigments. This one, maybe lemony. Very soft. I like this soft feeling. Maybe even add it here on this petal also, like a sunshine. I like what I achieved here. Wonderful illusion. I want to apply it for every single petal. Or luminosity red. It's so addictive. I can't stop. Sorry. Uh, let's turn to the next chapter. I create gift cards. And I thought, what if I create this egg frame? Funny. So this is my... Actually, this is a tutorial. Jonah, you missed my tutorials. Actually, I made a tutorial with this guy here. And another one. I right now think which one to choose. I have both tutorials, but I think it's too much. Maybe um, I should uh, limit to the one. I have a tutorial how I create them from the white space of paper to, to the very end. And how I place them and create uh, gift cards. So this would be definitely uh, in the season two, of course, will. I know just those rabbits are will be there and you will watch. If you're my student, you're already enrolled into Wheel. If you're not my student, you have the possibility to join and you're highly, you're welcome to our wonderful community of inspired artists who loves watercolors, especially loose style of painting. And yeah, yeah you will get an update soon how to join. With a list of materials and photographs and stuff. I wanted to show you an example what you can do. Here you can add leaves on top of this. Like I did here. So when my painting dries, I'm going to add those leaves. Just a few. As you can see, you can count them. There are not so many. But this adds realistic feeling to your crocuses so this is not the final stage this is the first layer i just wanted to show you as much as i can on the first but later i can add those leaves and yeah i'm going to finish my painting but also you can be using the same algorithm the same structure which i showed you but for the portrait orientation okay so stay open for the paper orientation. Also, you can paint different crocuses. For example, yellow. I love yellow. As I said, I saw them in my garden. My garden and the first spring sign is yellow crocuses. So I love them. They are the first. Or, for example, violet. Here I use the same, for all of them, I use the same algorithm. You can see outline. I painted a fresh air. Here I added a little bit of a green around. Then I painted the bottom part. Or here, and developed a ground, very spontaneous. And later I developed the centers. And at the very end, just a few leaves, and I finish a painting. Very simple. So I wanted to open your imagination for ideas how you can use this information from this painting afternoon for your art. And also, as you can see, you can paint not only crocuses, water lilies, for example. I can turn this one actually to the water lily. For example, if you have uh, not so lucky painting and some parts actually look look na looks nice for you you can crop them 
and make those cards like this. See it? And the part which you are not satisfied with, you can cut it. See it? Or for example with this one here, with the yellow. Also, you can use them for gift cards. Just imagine to get this gift card about this spring. Jonna, this is a homemade, my own uh, paints. Let me know what's what's your favorite crocuses, chipmunk, or gift card ideas. Those cropping tips, and I will see you next time on Monday with another painting afternoon. So yeah, uh, take care. Don't be sad. Practice. Find what sparkles your inner artist. Spread your creative energy. It's needed those days the most. So stay strong. Keep doing no matter what. And yeah, enjoy and benefit uh, all the tips I gave you during this painting session. Past replays of painting afternoons are already on my YouTube channel. Go check them out. And the next session, don't miss the next session because I continue to paint my spring science. And there will be dog roses, fluffy cutie and butterfly. Dolores loves the crocuses tutorial. Carrie loves the gift card. Jonah, all are wonderful. I can't wait. Yeah, I can't wait the rabbit course. Anne Catherine, all three. <laughs> Good. Thank you everybody for joining me today. And yep, yeah, if you are on my waiting list, you will get a replay of this session, maybe later, while it's pro after its processing. This was it. Take care and see you on Monday. Bye-bye.